How you doing, everybody? I know I'm a little late on this one, but we're gonna take a quick look at The Atomic Blonde, directed by David Leitch and starring Charlize Theron, James McAvoy, and Sofia Boutella. This takes place shortly before the fall of the Berlin Wall, and Theron plays Lorraine Broughton, our titular atomic blonde, a British secret agent. And she has been sent into East Berlin because somewhere in East Berlin, there is a man in possession of the list. And yes, that's really what they call it. It is a rather important list, as it contains pretty much every Western spy in Soviet territory. So if those dirty commies got their hands on it, it could end very badly for a whole lot of people. And Broughton works together with David Percival, played by McAvoy, and Delphine LaSalle, played by Butella, to recover the list before it falls into the hands of the KGB. So this movie does something very interesting early on. It starts off with Charlie Theron naked in a bathtub. And before you get too excited, there is nothing sexual about this at all. You heard me. If this was pretty much any other movie and I told you it started out with Charlie Theron naked, you would assume we're in for a sexy time. Oh, not here. She is battered and bruised from head to toe. And it's a pretty disturbing sight, and she's basically bathing in a tub of ice, trying to recover from what must have been one hell of a night. Pretty much this entire movie is told in a flashback, and that first image of our title character lets you know just exactly what she's in for. I've heard some people compare the Atomic Blonde to, like, a female James Bond, which is... Kind of accurate, the similarities are definitely there. She is a chain-smoking, hard-drinking, ice-cold killer, and Theron does a damn good job with this part. A few years ago, I never would have predicted Charlize Theron would be the next big action star, but here we are, and it doesn't feel weird at all. And I thought the movie kind of had a Casino Royale vibe to it. There weren't really any fancy gadgets like you would see in your typical James Bond movie, but there were plenty of very brutal fights. There are times in this movie where she just gets the ever-loving shit beat out of her, and she just keeps on going. It's amazing. It is very intense and visceral and hard-hitting, and even a bit darkly humorous at times. There is a scene in this movie where a KGB agent is beating the crap out of some guy, and the whole time, 99 Luftballons is playing in the background. Seems like such an odd song to play for such a disturbing scene. Speaking of which, the soundtrack for this movie is pretty fucking awesome. It's got a lot of good music from that era, from David Bowie, George Michael, The Clash, and... Then Marilyn Manson shows up for some reason. He's not doing one of his songs, he's covering an 80s ministry song, I think, but it was still a little weird to hear his voice. Like, what are you doing here? McAvoy plays another British secret agent who is, shall we say, just a bit unorthodox and maybe a bit unhinged. He was a fun guy, I enjoyed him. And I really like Sophia Boutella in this movie. It is so rare that I get to see her without being covered in various layers of makeup and or CGI. But she delivered a great performance here, and her relationship with Charlize Theron's character was really well done. The action sequences are really this movie's selling point, and they were fantastic. And I really like Charlize Theron's fighting style. She can and will turn anything into a weapon. And when all else fails, gun. Simple but effective. And the way David Leitch put these fight scenes together, this is exactly what I want to see in an action movie. It's not riddled with a bunch of quick cuts that make it almost impossible to see what's going on. It is a lot of really long takes so you can actually see the action. Of course, when you see a lot of those quick cuts nowadays, it's usually because they're trying to make a shitty fight look better than it is, and in this movie, they don't have to do that. There is one action sequence in particular where Charlie Theron is trying to fight off a shit ton of KGB agents in this old apartment building, and that eventually leads into a car chase. And that entire sequence from the start of the fight in that building all the way down to the car chase, like, had to be about a 10 minute sequence, appears to be one take. Now, it's probably not. I'm sure there were a few very cleverly hidden cuts in there, but 
Still, to make that even look like one take was damned impressive. This is Leitch's first full-length film where he has the sole directorial credit. Previously, he was an uncredited co-director for John Wick, so that can give you some idea of what to expect here. And before that, he was primarily a stunt worker, either as a performer or a stunt coordinator. So, makes perfect sense that he would know what a good action sequence is supposed to look like. I should also point out that this guy is going to direct Deadpool 2. I am quite happy with this. The movie is not perfect. There are a few moments where it felt a little slow and the story was kind of starting to drag a bit. And a few of the gunfights seemed like Charlie Theron had way too much time to kill those guys before anyone had a chance to get a shot off. It's not egregious or anything. There's just a couple of moments here and there where I thought, okay, these guys must be the slowest draws in the entire Eastern Bloc because one of you motherfuckers should have got a shot off by now. Come on. And the movie has a few twists of varying levels of plausibility. There was one at the end where I was just like, what? Come on, no. But overall, I had a lot of fun with it. And if you are a fan of hard-hitting action, this is something you definitely don't want to miss. And that's it for The Atomic Blonde. Till next time, take care.